What's going on, everyone? We have Christian Schaff with us here today, the founder and CEO of Unchartered Supply Co. He is the guy to ask for anything adventure, survival, tactical. Um, he's going to be diving into how to safely adventure with your dog, yeah. some tips and tricks about how to go about it. Um, and I will let him do more talking than me about it. So Christian, if you could tell everyone a little bit about yourself, uh, that would be great. Cool, man. Yeah, thanks for the intro. Um, well, I'm out here in Park City, Utah. It's um, quite a place to live. I think every day we're kind of out in the elements and, and um, you know, doing stuff that kind of requires you to be thoughtful about what you bring with. Uh, my background, I grew up on a farm in Wisconsin. Um, I grew up raising German shepherds that were, were usually sold for search and rescue type situations my mom currently has a search and rescue dog she goes out and does all sorts of stuff with with her dog indy um you know so i grew up on a farm in wisconsin i, I i've done a lot of things I, I played in a band for a while that led me to um operating and kind of managing mostly entertainment for operation iraqi freedom with my brothers so that turned into about 40 trips overseas um and you know when i was home i was climbing mountains and hunting and doing outdoor stuff. So, um, all the uncharted stuff. just kind of, yeah, uncharted just kind of came from, you know, I was around a lot of capable people and then I was around a lot of people that never really had that experience and, and built that know-how to kind of navigate the unforeseen. And it just seemed like the right products didn't exist. And so our goal was to try to make the world a safer place through, you know, really high quality, um, survival gear. We started with a thing called the 72. It's a survival kit. Um, the idea being, 95% of survival situations are resolved in 72 hours. So what can we make to get people through this for 72 hours? Um, that product took us on Shark Tank. Um, we sold all over. We sell FBI, CIA, Border Patrol, guys like that. And you know, now today we've got the emergency products. And then we've also got what I call prepared adventures. So kind of get all the way out there and all the way home, whether you're hunting or traveling with your dog or mountain biking or you know off-roading or whatever it is. Um, you know, our goal is just to kind of make make the world a safer place for people that are out there exploring and, and kind of living life. So that's what we do every day. It's awesome. It's awesome. And, and it's so cool that, you know, we were able to kind of merge what we're doing as far as ad adventure and working dogs. Right. And you guys are now kind of drifting into that space as well to allow people to just adventure safer with their dogs. Right. Um, and yeah. I mean, my, my, my dog is, is my family and he's, he's with me almost every second of every day so it was for us we weren't trying to become a a dog products company but it just became a thing where it's like we were around our dogs so much and we were taking them with so much it seemed like a big gap in what we were doing to not think about them you know they were part of a family and it was a one family member we hadn't really built something for yeah sure and 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 as part of the family obviously you want them to come on adventures and stuff that's a reason a lot of us like pick the breeds we do is so that we can bring them on adventures whether it's backpacking fly fishing skiing like you and baron do um you know as responsible <clears throat> dog owners it's kind of our our duty to look after them on those adventures right uh and so do you think you could provide people with just kind of some insights into the best practices for ensuring our dog's safety during any outdoor excursions okay. sure well i mean the first thing i would tell you is you never know when that day is going to come when something happens uh with baron just uh, you know i ski with him a lot we had a pretty infamous day up in the mountains where um a buddy of mine skied into him it was it was probably baron's fault i'm honest he was excited and jumping around but you know we ski three four five times a week in the winter um and we've done that for his whole five years and then one day it got really serious so i i think the most important thing is to be vigilant and never just get lazy with like it hasn't happened the last hundred times, so it's probably not going to happen today. I, I tend to think if it, happened, it hasn't happened the last hundred times, you're probably more likely because it hasn't happened yet, right? It's like you're kind of, it's a little bit of Russian roulette. And the dogs and humans, you know, we're all kind of the same. Like th things can happen. We can get injured. It's just, it's just a part of life and a part of having an adventurous life. So, you know, my first piece of advice would be just because it hasn't happened doesn't mean it's not going to be, be thoughtful every day. Um, and then it's like, well, what's the most likely things that happen? Well, that really depends on where you are, what you're doing with your dog, 
what your dog breed is. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you have a short nose breed, mm-hmm. like my buddy, we ski with, uh, he's got a bulldog. It's she's insane. She skis with us almost every day, but that's amazing. Those she dogs, skis. I've yeah. seen the pictures of her too. <laughs> I'm like, what? She's, uh, she's one in a million. She's had two ACL surgeries, um, but she's still out there. But, um, you know, those dogs overheat. You got to be thoughtful about that. Maybe you have a dog that doesn't overheat, but they're prone to some other type of injury. So I think it's really important to know your breed, know what you're doing and plan accordingly. From our studies, the most common things that happen are, are cuts, are, are bites, whether it's like a bee sting or a porcupine quill, um, a fight with another dog. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, typically wild animals are not a problem. Uh, my dog actually, it's not like a horrible dog owner, but my friend was watching my dog last 4th of July and fireworks went off and he was gone for six days. And I learned that, you know, very rarely are wild animals a problem with dogs. It's, it's more other dogs, um, you know, bigger biting, dogs. yeah, fights, fights between dogs, things like that. Yeah. Them getting, cutting their paw on a rock or being on too hot a pavement or that kind of a thing. So, you know, plan ahead, think about where you're going, what you're doing and, and have the right stuff for them. Sure. Sure. And I think, you know, training kind of plays into that a lot too, as well. Just when you're out there, yeah. just having the training in place, um, around other wildlife and stuff, like, do you have any kind of, I guess, tips or gear that you typically use to train your dog the appropriate things when out on the trail? Yeah, I mean, I, a I have a recall, you know, I have a Garmin collar, a Delta yep. collar on my dog all the time because personally, I don't, I don't love being on leash all the time. If I'm trail running or mountain biking, it's it's kind of sure. impossible. But this, you know, like in Park City where I live. Uh, as long as you have a leash with you and you have this, this counts as being on leash. And, you know, it's got vibrate, beep, and shock. So for me, um, you know, my dog, he likes to put it, he likes to push the limits. If I don't, if I don't shock him for a while, his his recall starts to slow down a little bit. Yeah. So, you know, I've trained him with this. He knows what the beep means. And um, I've got other steps to take if he doesn't respond. But I do think no matter how well your dog's trained, having having this kind of control to even even snap them out of something they may be. And they may be, you know, there's been times when maybe a dog is, is growling in mine and my dog is just, is just faced off with him and he may not even be aggressive, but he's 100% focused on that dog and what's happening. And mm-hmm. to be able to, to send a beep or a vibrate under his neck, will will snap him out of it and bring him back. Totally. So, you know, that's, that's something I do every day. Um, but, but, you know, training is, is, is critical. And I, I wish mine was trained better. He's, he's fairly well trained, but I've got friends that have dogs, Malinois, and, and you know, they're, it's incredible what they can make those dogs yeah. do. So I, well, I think it, no matter where your dog's breeds. at, you improve it. Yeah, yeah. It's different breeds too. And what they're capable of, like not to discredit, like for people who don't know, Christian has a greater Swiss mountain dog, awesome breed, great mountain dog, goofy personality, but it's, it's not going to have the same level of training as a dog <laughs> probably. Right. Um, probably not <laughs> right on that level. So, um, but you know, a lot of these people in our audience have Australian cattle dogs and that is, mm-hmm in my opinion, an awesome trail dog that you can really train to a very high level. Um, as long as you're putting in like kind of what we talked about, like an e-collar is a great tool that, that I mentioned a lot. Um, and I'll put a code in the um, description below for you guys for one that I use with Cowboy, um, but just allows you to have more freedom and control over your dog in those type of environments, right? Absolutely. And, and part of that too is in our environment here in Southern California, we just did rattlesnake aversion training. That's really the biggest thing I'm concerned about on the trail, just because it's it's hot, it's dry, and they're just everywhere during the summer. Um, and having that e-collar on them just in case, right, uh, is is better than the alternative, I guess. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we, we were fortunate enough to have as many rattlesnake situations out here, but um yeah. Again, it's, it's kind of like you have rattlesnakes, we have moose, you know, and yeah. um, sometimes you got to break their concentration away or call them back in an instant because you see something they don't, yeah. or you want to get ahead of it. I mean, there's been times I've been on the trail and I see an animal ahead and I can quickly call him back and get a hold of him versus, versus not having that control. And it's by the same with the rattlesnakes. Sure. Totally. Um, if, if your dog gets bit by a rattlesnake, are you familiar with the proper steps to take for that? Well, you know, what you don't want to do is, is get that venom spreading throughout their body. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, And that comes with elevated heart rate, a lot of activity. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I think it's pretty hard, at least my understanding to have the right anti-venom with all the time. Right. It's, it's a pretty delicate thing. What you want to do is, is, 
is stop the flow of that venom into their body as much as possible. And that's usually calming your dog down, maybe carrying them out, maybe even a tourniquet of sorts. I, you know, I don't know, like to pinch it off. That's what, that's what I would do. I, I'm not as hyper experienced on it, not having to deal with that as much, sure. but I do know that like the faster the heart beats, the faster that venom spreads and that's not what you want to do. So yeah. staying calm, getting your dog, you know, off its feet, maybe carrying it out, those types of things can definitely make a difference and give you more time. Totally. Am I right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> On track, man. Awesome. Great <clears throat> advice. Um, so as an outdoor enthusiast myself, and as a lot of these people are, um, you know, what are some of the actual items that you think we should be bringing on adventures with our dogs? So, you know, we just launched a product that actually we call the wolf pack. And what we, what we did there was we designed a, I've got it right here. Actually. It's a, it's a dog collar with a little pouch here that is designed to carry kind of what I would call like triage, triage first aid. So obviously this isn't enough space to carry everything you would ever need, but so many times just, just kind of getting on top of what's happening and getting them back to greater medical care is, is really critical. So this actually came about from my dog. I told you, my, you know, my dog skiing with my buddy and we were on the top of a, a pretty tall mountain, about 11,000 foot mountain, um, a long ways from my snowmobile, which was a long ways from my truck. And uh, I had this with us. This is our uncharted triage kit. I carry this with me all the time. This is for humans, but it's first aid and gear repair. And I was able to basically make a tourniquet out of the zip ties in here, the duct tape the uh, gauze and a stick and just cinched it down, put them on my shoulders, skied him to my snowmobile um, and, and got him out. And, um, you know, we called the vet ahead of time. They were ready for him. I knew that minutes were counting and um, you know, the, the vet came out a couple hours later and just said, I don't know how you got him here so fast, but he only had a few minutes left and everything you did was a difference maker. Yeah. And so it really wow. pushed me down the path of like, Wow, what it what do most people do? I, I'm a survival guy. I think about this. I carry the gear all the time and I was ready, but you know, most people probably don't. They don't think about their dogs. Their dogs are just like, yep, in the truck, let's go. They never, they never question anything. They never ask where we're going. Did you pack for me? Um, so you know, I we think a lot about that. Our our, our triage kit with or our, sorry, our wolf pack, which you can see. Um, we can talk about that later, but there's a list of things in there. Generally, what we put in here was stuff to stop cuts bites stings uh you know the, the kind of stuff that happens most frequently mm -hmm. um it'd always be great to bring everything you can but a lot of times you want to be on the trail run and not carrying five pounds of first aid right yeah. and so totally. our goal is to always kind of not impede the experience but also have enough coverage to help if something happens mm -hmm. so again back to like what should people carry I, again i would say what's your environment what's your dog mm -hmm. breed how long are you gone for? What are you doing? What are the risks out there? I mean, I, I know in my neighborhood, there's a lot of porcupines, there's sharp rocks, it gets hot. Um, you know, those are the things I think about with my dog when I'm out running is making sure I have enough water for him and I've got something to pull quills out. You know, in this thing, we've got a, um, a little metal tweezers that can help you remove some things like that. I mean, it's just kind of, it's always personal, but what we, like, yeah. what we like to do here is start with a really good base uh, of things that, kind of any you take with anywhere and then if you have to add things you can yeah that's awesome and, and it is so specific to kind of where you're at right um and like for us i would probably have stuff mostly for like pads because it's so dry and mm -hmm. cut feet on rocks and stuff on the trail um and we don't have porcupines right <laughs> maybe a cactus you might get a cactus in there but uh sure just, sure just having the stuff and and to me this is something like when you're going on longer trips, uh, it's not necessarily like the cure for all, but it's going to, like you said, get you back to the vet or it's going to buy you time to get you to where you need to go. If something serious does happen, it seems like. I always think of emergencies and, and even adventures in like stages, you know, you leave your house and your car and your car's at the trailhead. And then from your car, you might go to a campsite from a campsite. You might go out if you're exploring or hunting or whatever. And so I always try to have like, layers of protection in those steps and maybe you know you can put more in your truck because you're not you're not bound by a weight restriction right so your truck might have a bunch of stuff and then your home has even more but you know what you don't want to do is have a bunch of stuff at your truck 
and then nothing at your campsite and nothing on your person as you're out there because now you've got two steps to get back mm -hmm. so you know i always think about it like that like how can you make sure you've got some coverage every step of the way and you've always got kind of a rally point to get back to where you have more in case you need it totally totally i love it it's obviously extremely important to maintain a dog's physical and mental well-being during outdoor adventures. Uh, you know, what type of exercises, conditioning, health-related stuff for longevity do you recommend to keep our dogs ready for adventures? Because, you know, a lot of people assume they can just kind of take their dog from the couch and go run up a mountain, but in reality, right. it would actually be harmful to the dog. Um, so what type of stuff are you doing with Baron to prepare for adventures? Yeah, I mean, that's a really good point. I think I think the first thing is when you get a puppy and they're young, you got to make sure that you're not creating, you know, injuries. You can't run a puppy as mm -hmm. hard as you can an adult. Their bones are developing super fast. They have, you know, their bones are soft. Yep. Um, I know with Baron, it was, yeah, it was like a year and a half before I really just, you know, would let him go. We'd go on little hikes and we'd go walk through the hills and, um, you know, I'd, I'd take him out into some unsure footing type stuff, you know, stuff that he could, he could get more comfortable and more familiar with adventure without, without taxing him and like just running miles. Um, I think that's the first thing. It's just knowing your dog and knowing when you can really push them. For me, you know, with Baron, um, we have, we have pretty extreme seasons out here, but we have something we can do in all the seasons. So, you know, in the winter we're ski touring in the mornings, we, we hike up with our skis and ski down and, um, for him, that's a nice slow hike up a mountain, and then he gets to blast down, which is kind of oh, fun. Awesome. Yeah, it's 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 really fun, and um, the pictures are incredible, and it's always such a fun morning. But um, you know, in the summer, I think the hardest thing for him, being a big black dog, is the summer. And uh, for me, it's it's starting slow. You know, maybe it's just a mile, maybe it's two miles. We we stay pretty active every day. He's kind of my personal trainer, right? Like he mm -hmm. needs to get out, and it helps me. So we stay on top of it, but I can definitely tell a difference from like, you know, the beginning of a season to the end of the season with his endurance and kind of how he's feeling. And I think you just got to pay attention to your dog. You have to know them. If if they look like they're struggling, you got to, you got to pull it back. Um, and you can tell, you know, you can tell when a dog's always searching for shade, always digging up moist dirt, to try to land to try to cool themselves. If they're just panting uncontrollably, if their eyes, you know, the, the yeah, color of the tongue. tongue. Yeah. Tongue's like four times mm -hmm. longer than normal. Right, right. I mean, you have to pay attention to those things. If your dog looks like it's having fun, and it's okay if it's panting, obviously, but if your dog looks like it's having fun, it probably is. But the thing about dogs and wild animals is they don't really, they don't really stop because they don't feel like they, they just keep going. Mm -hmm. And, and um, they have this ability to push through probably a lot of like red flags. And, and it's our responsibility to pay attention to those. So you know, it's like anybody, it's like starting a training plan. It's like ramp up to it, pay attention. If your dog is sleeping all day and just dead, he probably needs it. You know, mm -hmm. if he's up and looking around and excited to go again, I think you could probably push him a little more. I, I, I'm not a, you know, a highly trained expert on dog training. I just kind of go with common sense and I, I pay attention to the dog that I know very well. And I can, I can tell, you know, if we have a big ski day and for two days, he'll just sleep on the couch and like, let him heal. He's yeah. fine. You know, he starts flipping my elbow up here at the desk, wanting to go outside and whining. Then I know it's probably time to go again. He's ready. So, yeah. Cool. That's awesome. Um, yeah, you, you definitely have to build up to it. And I agree. Even, you know, with Cowboy, he's bred for a warm climate. In summers, I still notice, like, his activity level is significantly less. Um, yeah. And, and, like, I know people with German Shepherds who have actually, like, had heat strokes with them in the summers and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so, it's, you really have to monitor your dog um, and just be in tune with their specific needs. And and you should, you know, if you're spending every single day with them, like most of us are, um, you should be able to recognize that fairly quickly, I would think. Yeah, it comes with knowing your dog. Yeah. Um, but you also have to understand that dog will do anything for you. Yeah. And so... It's not going to just say, hey, man, I need a breather. It, no. It'll never do that. So you have to do that for them. Yeah, they'll, they'll run themselves into the ground for us, for sure. Yeah. Um, and, and that was part of the thing with raising up Cowboy 2 was like, it's like you got to tell him when to stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he'll just keep going. He was like nine weeks old and he wanted to do 11 miles. And I'm like, buddy, we're not. Oh, doing my it. gosh. <laughs> well, yeah, that's I a go. lot. Um, but um, yeah, cool. 
as far as diet goes, you know, what are you feeding Baron? I know you are a bow hunter and he's probably getting some elk here and there. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I um obviously that's not reasonable for most people, right? Yeah. Uh, you don't have a freezer full of wild game. Yeah. Um but you know, Baron Baron gets some high quality kibble. He's he's using you guys as supplements. I you know, I think if you're pushing a dog, it's like I I take athletic greens, I take vitamins, I take, yep. you know, I think I think dogs are the same. If you're pushing them and they're burning through things and they're strict, you know, they're using their muscles and their bones, like you, you have to supplement that. I think it's it's really important. I I generally don't trust, you know. The bags of dog food you buy at the grocery store to be a perfect diet for your dog i think everybody knows that right yeah. so i tend to use the kibble as a base um he does get wild game a couple times a week um and you know i think he loves it and i, I can see a performance difference when he gets really really good food and has the supplements he needs uh a couple of years ago he had a pretty bad limp um we had been skiing and he just he caught a branch under the snow and it kind of tweaked his his bicep muscle basically. And it took a few years to work through that. But, you know, I think, I think nutrition is a huge part of that nutrition, rest, hydration, all those things. You yeah. know, I, you're talking about supplements here, but you know, the other thing is I, I have one of those big Yeti silos in the back of my truck, the big water holders. Yeah. And um, all summer I keep that full in there because man, you just never know when it's going to get too hot or you need water quickly. And most of that's for him. You yeah. know, most of it's just to make sure I can cool him down quickly, whether it's, you know, getting him wet or just having water. So I think it's a combination hydration. of things. Yeah. Hydration is huge. And a lot of people don't realize how dehydrated mm -hmm. dogs can still get in like the cold winter months too. Um, like, yeah. I mean, do you bring anything with you when you're skiing or is, are you out like not long enough for that to matter? Or how do you kind of deal with nutrition on those short day trip type stuff? Yeah. So, so longer hikes or ski tours, definitely. Um, it's funny, you know, we'll be standing on snow and I'll pull out a water bottle. He knows how to drink out of a water bottle and he will, he will stare and look at me. Or if, or if I just open my backpack, he sticks his nose in there because he yeah, wants water. Ready for like water. they know to eat snow, but as, as you know, with humans as well, um, converting the snow actually will dehydrate you more at times. So, um, yeah, I carry water for him unless it's a, you know, unless it's a quick one hour up and down, then yeah. I'm not taking water for myself either. So, uh, yeah, but I, I like if I'm mountain bike in the summer, I carry I have two water bottle holders on my bike. And then we have a thing called the park pack where I have two more water bottles. Mm -hmm. And three of those are for Baron and one's for me. <laughs> um, but that's what he needs. So, yeah. you know, I've got to be sure that I'm ready to take care of him. Totally. Got to do what you got to do for the dog. Yep, for sure. Cool, Christian. Um, well, if people want to find out more about uh, the wolf pack, where can they go to do that? Yeah, I think what we'll do here is um, I'll set up a promo code for you that maybe you can okay. share below. You know, this collar won best in show at Outdoor Retailer, which is the biggest outdoor gear show in the country. Um, and that was in a prototype form a year ago. So we've since improved it. Um, these things will be shipping in a couple months. And we're just pretty excited about this thing. I mean, I'll just take you through it really quickly. It's just it's got this big pouch on the front that's going to hold a first aid kit. Mm -hmm. You put a little poop bag holder on here on the side because nobody nice. likes tying those to their leash or carrying oh. them in their pocket, but it fits in there if you need it. If you don't want this, it just unvelcros and comes off, which is nice. You don't even have oh. to have that. Got these little magnetic clasps. So it's a really quick on and off with your dog. You just slap it on as you're getting out of the truck. It's got its own little handle and a and a and a leash attachment here. So um military grade nylon, got two sizes. Um, it's, it's a, it's a really cool collar. It looks cool on the dog. Yeah. Dogs don't mind it. Um, but yeah, we're, we're launching an Indiegogo right now. I mean, basically the way it works is you put your money down, you'll get like a, a pretty big discount on it. You have to wait, um, a little while until we ship them, but they're being made right now and they're going to be out shortly. And, um, we're really excited to get these in people's hands. So I yeah. appreciate anybody checking it out. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm excited. I think, mm -hmm. you know, I would love to get one on cowboy and even if it's like, just putting his kibble in there with like some very yeah. basic stuff when we're going backpacking and stuff like, cause personally, I don't like to use harnesses. I think they just kind of like, they rub weird a lot of the times they restrict movement sometimes. Um, so something like that to be able to put something in around his neck is just allows him to be more free when we're on the trail and stuff. Yeah. So, harnesses like, and like idea. the backpacks, you know, the backpacks that they, they overheat the dogs and they're yeah, hard to exactly. balance and they slide around and, 
I just, it's kind of like me. It's like when I go running, I just want to wear shorts and shoes yeah. and some headphones. I don't even like to bring my phone, you know, it's weighing my shorts <clears throat> down or whatever. So. Right. So imagine a dog suddenly putting yeah. five pounds of unbalanced weight in a spot that flops a ton. Like I just, I just don't like that for the dog. And that's why we did this. So yeah, I think, you know, we've put up, we've, we've tested this on a ton of different dogs and they don't even, they don't even think about it. Nobody's, nobody's got a problem with it. They just, they feel free. And I think that's a, that's a cool thing. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, Christian, I really appreciate you coming on. I'm sure people got some great value out of that on how to safely adventure with their dogs. Um, Like he said, we'll put a link in the description below to get you guys hooked up with a special discount if you do decide to go with uh, that unchartered wolf pack um, thing. So thank you again. Do you have any final words of advice for these dog owners on adventures? No, man, come no, just come say hi. Come check out Baron's page. We're always doing fun stuff. I'd love, I'd love to see people, you know, see their dogs. I'd love to meet people. So reach out. Um, you know, this was kind of my personal mission in life was to make the world a, a better place through keeping people prepared and safe. So for me, I like to meet the people that are using our gear. I love feedback. I love ideas. Um, just just hit us up and talk with us. We're a small business here in Utah trying to trying to grow and and you know, appreciate any thought. Awesome. Thanks, Christian. You bet. Thanks, man.